Hey guys, Georgia Soundtracks here. This week I'm here in front of two brand new exciting releases from our friends at Rapido Trains. Now, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to walk through an installation process on both of these passenger locomotives to show you what it takes to install a Tsunami 2 so that you can enjoy Model Railroaders Reader's Choice Award winner for favorite sound decoder inside these great models. So let's get started. Now first up, what we have to do is we have to open these models up. Now we're going to do this installation one at a time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make one of these disappear. We'll start with the F40PH. Okay, so now that we have the F40PH in front of us, this one's actually one of the easiest Rapido models to get into. All you have to do is remove the coupler boxes which I've already done in this particular model. So the coupler box on the front and rear, there's a screw that fits on the underside. Now what you want to do, there's a lot of detail, so you have to be careful. What you want to do is just grip the underside of the body shell, slightly pull it apart, and as you see, the body lifts off, leaving the body's chassis right below. Now in order to get into this, we need just a simple pair of tweezers to pull up a little piece of tape, and this is holding these iPhone speakers in. Now what they've supplied is they've actually given us two iPhone speakers. So we simply remove the tape, pull the speaker aside, and that gives us access to the 21 pin socket here inside the model. So to start, all we have to do is simply lift this dummy PCB off. And this is what makes it a 21 pin DC model. We just lift this dummy jumper off. All right, now our 21 pin jumper board just lifts right out just like that and as you can see here inside the body shell you can see that 21 pin plug right here on the other side now before we do the actual decoder installation there is one little modification that we do need to make these two speakers are actually wired in parallel which means power is going to each speaker now these small iPhone 4 speakers are actually only rated for about half a watt to three quarters of a watt, similar to the way our Minikube speakers are as well. So what we have to do is we have to wire them into series. We have to change the wiring. Now the speaker terminals are actually right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna trace the black wire from one of the speakers, doesn't matter, pick one. And then you're gonna take the red wire on the other speaker and solder them together. So you can simply cut them or desolder them off of the circuit board and then take those two and rewire them. So what we're doing is, let's say my palm or my hand is the speaker, they're wired up like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the speakers and wire them like this so that they're in series. Pretty simple. So I'm gonna do this work off camera and we'll be right back to finish the installation. So now that I've taken one red wire from one speaker and the black wire from the other speaker, we've soldered those together here. Now our speakers are wired in series, which is basically from one speaker to the other and back to the decoder. Now the only thing left is to plug in the decoder. That's how easy this is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these wires up out of the way, revealing our 21 pin socket. We're gonna take our 885809. This is our TSU 21P NEM8 for EMD. This has the 645 turbo sound for the F40PH. We're simply going to line it up on the pins and we're just going to press it into place onto the 21 pin, just like that. Now, once we've installed the decoder, we simply take the second speaker that had been taped, simply pull it back over top and we put it on top. We tuck our wires back in next to the decoder. And there we have our nice compact installation done. Now all we have to do with everything tucked in is simply reinstall our shell, which simply just presses over, snaps into place. Now we just reinstall the coupler screws and then we're done. 
Okay, now that we've finished our installations, let's take them out for a test run, and then we're gonna do some basic setup and show you really why the Tsunami 2 works really well with these models. So I've got the F40PH here. We'll start chronologically by locomotive release. So we'll start with the F40PH. So we'll go ahead and apply track power. We hear it start up. We've got control. We can move it forward and we can move it in reverse. So everything seems to be working just fine on the model. So let's start with a couple of sound selections so we can match the F40PH. So first up is gonna be our prime mover. So when we go to our website at soundtracks.com under the manuals tab, you're gonna see the sound selection for EMD. And when we look at the sound selection for EMD, you're gonna see that prime mover number five is the EMD 645 turbo. So I'm gonna take CV123. We're gonna set that to a value of five. You're gonna hear that low pressure alarm bell kick on again, and it cycles in, and now we're gonna hear the new prime mover. Now next up, we wanna select the air horn. Now the proper air horn for this particular Amtrak F40PH is the K5LA. So again, when we look at our sound selection reference, you can actually see that we have three references for the K5LA. In this particular case, we're gonna use the first one. Now, when we're looking at the other K5LAs, they're different recordings of different K5LA horns. So you can listen to all three, select CB120 to a value of four, five, and six, and then pick which one sounds best to the model you're making. And we're gonna show you that when we get to the other F59PH. So now we set CB120 to a value of four, and now you'll be able to hear that K5LA number one that Amtrak is known for. Just like the real thing. So next up, we can talk about the lighting, we can do all the settings and so forth, but we're gonna make this a little bit short because we've talked about lights before. But one of the really cool features of the Tsunami 2 is head-end power. So when the F40PH was actually running power for the passenger train, it was running in what was known as head-end power. And in this particular case, the prime mover would notch up to notch eight. And therefore the main generator was creating enough energy to power not just the locomotive itself and the traction motors, but also the passenger train behind it with all the electric lights and air conditioning and cooking and all of that was now powered with the head-end power. So with our Tsunami 2, we can take function 16, and when we enable it, you'll hear that low pressure bell kick on, and then you'll hear the prime mover notch all the way up to notch eight. Now while this is going up, I'm gonna tell you really quickly, these F40 PHs were known as little screamers. And the reason was because even sitting at a station with the passenger train behind it, you could hear that really high whine of the turbo. So now we're actually in head-end power mode. Now when I start to move forward, you'll hear that it doesn't really affect the prime mover. Same thing when we go in reverse. Same thing. Your head-end power is the dictating factor of your prime mover sound. Now, once we enable dynamic digital exhaust, you'll hear the changes in that prime mover. So let's do that right now. Now we've set the dynamic digital exhaust and we've, you've seen me do that in the past. So now with the dynamic digital exhaust is set, now I can move forward at speed step one or two. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of pressure on the nose and you can hear that prime mover now get louder and more intense as it's working against my hand. And then when we release, you can hear the prime mover intensity drop back down but it's never left notch eight because again, it's powering the passenger train. And then when we turn off function 16, you hear that prime mover now drop back and now it runs and functions just like a normal locomotive. Now typically when you run multiple units together, so if you were to have two of these units coupled together, the head end power is actually going to be in the second unit. So when you're setting up your advanced consist, you wanna make sure that the lead unit ignores function 16, but the trailing unit activates 16, so that that way the head end power will sound on the second unit, 
more prototypically, just like you have in the real Amtrak units. Now, here's your little fun fact. If you had a third unit, the head end power would still be in the second unit. The reason is because the railroaders, if they had to address something, that way they don't have to walk all the way to the third unit to address it. They can just go from the second unit to, or the first unit to the second unit. Now the reason it's in the second unit is because the head end power was loud, locomotive shook, and so when the crews enabled the head end power on the second unit, their ride in the lead unit was a lot more comfortable. Now let's go ahead and fast forward and let's grab the F-59 PH and let's set it up for its settings and we'll talk about head end power with it. Okay, so now we're gonna start on the F-59 PHI. And this is where I'm really gonna encourage you to read the manual. Not only do they have some fun little quips written in the manual, but it also does tell you how to do the removal of the body shell. So in this particular case, you don't need to remove the couplers. All we need to do is remove the four handrail stanchions at the four corners of the locomotive. So this handrail right here that comes up from the steps up into to the nose, and then the one that's here on the back on the steps that goes up to the side of the body and then the same on the other side. So all we have to do is get a small pair of tweezers and remember some of these are glued in so it may pop a little bit but don't panic they're metal handrails so they will just simply bend away and then what we're going to do is we're just going to simply twist it and move it out of the way of the body shell so that we can remove our body shell. So we have this one, and then the last one is over here on the front, or on the rear. We're just simply going to, well, this one came out this way. So we're gonna pull this up. Now we're just going to remove the shell off the chassis, just like that. And so you can see that the body shell on this one, again, simply just lifts off. Now again you notice we actually have two of these iPhone 4 speakers again. So we're going to have to do the same process like we did with the F40PH. So I'm going to go ahead and do that work. I'm going to pull out the dummy board and we'll finish this installation here in just a minute. Now in this particular model we're done making our speakers wired in series. Now again we did similar to what we did in the F40PH but we did this with the F59PH. Now, the difference is, one thing I want you to notice here is on this speaker, you'll notice there are two white wires. I have to report on what I saw, and when I went to trace the wires, I noticed that the one lead for speaker A was wired to the V+, but the V- minus on the second speaker was actually wired to the same V+. So what happened was the speakers were actually wired backwards. And what that does is it causes the speaker, when one's moving forward, the other's moving backward. And so it cancels the sound out. So when you're doing your installation, trace the wires and make sure that when you have the two terminals coming out of each speaker, that the same ones are assigned to positive and the same ones are assigned to negative and wire them up in series just like this to make sure that you get the best sound out of your model. So to do this, I had to take the wires off of the terminals and rewire them and reattach them to the motherboard. Now, as you can see, we have our wires here. You go from one to the other and you see our solder joint. So now the only thing left is to install the decoder. So now I have our TSU-21P NEM8 for EMD-2 because in this case, we have the 12 cylinder 710 so that you can hear it in this F59. So again, we simply line up the connector, line it up to the pins on the motherboard, simply press it into place, and it's that easy. Now we take our tape with the speaker attached to it, and hopefully you've been careful enough not to pick up every piece of rabbit hair or dog hair running around. Now we're gonna take this speaker, and we're going to mount it up top, and we're going to take the tape and hold it in place just like that. And yes, this wire may be a little loose, but not a big deal. We can take it, spin it around a little bit, and then tuck it in, and that should protect it. Now the only thing left is to reinstall the shell, which again, simply mounts onto the body just like this. 
snaps down, and then reconnect those grab irons and handrails that you've pulled loose to be able to remove the shell. So it's that simple. Now we have the F59PH. Let's go ahead and get it started. So let's test it. We can move forward. We can move reverse. We've got full control of this locomotive as well. So all is well. Now let's go ahead and select the sounds. Now in this particular unit, the F59PH is actually a 12 cylinder 710. And so when we look at our sound selection reference for the MD2 prime mover selection, we can see that CB123 should be set to a value of six. So again, we're going to program CB123 to a value of 6, and you're going to hear the change being made. So now we have the locomotive fired up, and we have that 12-cylinder 710. So now again, we can check our air horn. Now this particular model again is a K5LA. Now remember, we have three to choose from, and so in this particular case, we're gonna pick a different one. So we're gonna take CB120, we're gonna set it to a value of five for the K5LA number two. So now when I blow my horn, you can hear that it's a slightly different version of the K5LA. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this one on this particular locomotive. Now, again, we've talked about lights. This particular locomotive has ditch lights with alternating flashing, and we've done lots of videos on those in the past. So we're gonna skip that particular portion right now, but we are gonna talk about head-end power. So like the F40PH we've talked about, when you hit F16, you hear the prime mover notch up to notch eight. Well, on these particular locomotives, EMD realized that they didn't need to use the main engine and the main generator to generate power for the passenger train. In this particular case, the F59PH is equipped with a auxiliary or supplemental head-end power diesel engine and generator. So with the Tsunami 2, you can select that. So here in CV112, you can see where the selection is a choice between a steam generator or an auxiliary HEP pup motor or auxiliary head-end power diesel engine. So with this CB112, we're going to enable the bit to add the head-end power auxiliary pup motor. So now, function 20, we'll turn on our auxiliary generator. So while we're sitting here at idle, we're going to go ahead and turn on function 20. And now you'll hear that auxiliary pup motor kick on. And notice my prime mover hasn't changed. So now as I move the diesel engine, You hear that diesel engine kick up, but with the dynamic exhaust enabled, now we put some pressure on it. And you can hear that prime mover notching up, even though the auxiliary pup motor is still running in the background. And again, we bring the locomotive to a stop, we release the power or the pressure, and the prime mover will drop down to idle. Now the other advantage is that every single sound effect has its own volume control. So if you think the head end pup motor is a little too loud, you can adjust that with CV144. And the prime mover volume is adjusted in CV131. So now that you've seen a little bit of the setup of both of these locomotives, these are great models put out by our friends at Rapido. But the good news is, you don't have to suffer with the sound system that they've chosen. You have great opportunity to use Tsunami 2 without any limitations. So we simply plug in the decoder, just like I've shown you, and now we've got a fantastic model, better than anybody else's out there. We've got our Tsunami 2 in the models, and we're ready for passenger service. Now, for more information, please visit our website at Soundtracks.com. Be sure to check out the user's guide, how you can really customize all of the features on both of these models, whichever one or both that you have.